The military in Guinea, which seized power more than two years ago, has dissolved the interim government in the West African nation and said it will appoint a new administration. The dissolution of the government was officially declared via a presidential decree, which was read on state TV on Monday by the Secretary General of the Presidency, Brigadier General Amara Kamara. No reason for the dissolution was provided and the date for the formation of a new government remains unknown. The dissolved government's ministers have been ordered to surrender their passports and official vehicles immediately, and their bank accounts have been frozen until further notice. The junta has also issued strict instructions to security agencies to seal all the country's borders until government ministries have been fully handed over to the junta. Lower-level officials have been given temporary charge of state ministries until the appointment of a new government. It is noteworthy that the dissolved government was led by Bernard Gumu, who was appointed as the Prime Minister by coup leader Mamadi Dumbuya. In September 2021, Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya, the military leader, led a successful coup in Guinea, overthrowing the democratically elected President Alpha Conde. This action followed a series of protests against Mr. Conde's controversial bid for a third term in office. Under international pressure, the military leader promised to hand over the reins of government to elected civilians by December 2024. The country had experienced a prolonged period of political tension, sparked by Conde's highly controversial attempt to secure a third term in the presidential election of 2020. Despite the country's two-term limit for presidency, Conde emerged victorious after pushing through a new constitution in March 2020. The protests against Conde's third term resulted in numerous fatalities as the security forces clashed with protesters. Additionally, hundreds of people were arrested and the government detained several prominent opposition members accusing them of inciting and abetting electoral violence in Guinea. Guinea and several other countries in West and Central Africa have experienced multiple coups in recent years, which have been strongly condemned by the West African regional bloc ECOWAS, the African Union and the UN. Since 2017, seven military coups have taken place in the region, with four of the countries affected being members of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. On August 18, 2020, the military overthrew President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita in Mali. A transitional government was formed in October, but on May 24, 2021, the military arrested the President and the Prime Minister. Colonel Asimi Goita was inaugurated as transitional president in June. Similarly, in Guinea, President Alpha Conde was overthrown by a military coup on September 5, 2021, and Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya became president on October 1. The military junta has promised to return the country to elected civilians by the end of 2024. Meanwhile, in Sudan, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhane led soldiers in ousting transitional civilian leaders on October 25, 2021. This was supposed to lead the country towards democracy after 30 years of dictatorship under Omar al-Basha, himself deposed in 2019. A power struggle between General Burhane and his former deputy Mohamed Hamdane Daglo has since resulted in a war which has claimed the lives of at least 5,000 people since April 15, 2023. In Burkina Faso, President Rock Mark Christian Kabore was ousted from power by the military on January 24, 2022. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henri Sandaogo Damiba was inaugurated as president in February but he was also dismissed from his position by the military on September 30th. Captain Ibrahim Traoré was invested as the transitional president until a presidential election scheduled for July 2024. Lastly, in Niger, the military announced on July 26, 2023, that they had overthrown President Mohamed Bazoum. General Abdorahamane Tiani 
became the new strongman of the country. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, announced on August 10 its intention to deploy a regional force to restore constitutional order, while continuing to favor the diplomatic route. ECOWAS was established in 1975 to create a large trading bloc that would facilitate self-sufficiency and cooperation among its member states. The organization sought to address the political and economic challenges that West African countries have faced since gaining independence from European colonial rule. ECOWAS has made strides in enhancing economic growth and cooperation in the region. However, the organization has not been effective in addressing the challenges to democracy and governance faced by its member states. ECOWAS formed a peacekeeping alliance, the Economic Community of West Africa States Monitoring Group. In 1990, in recognition of the link between economic prospects and political stability and security in the region, the monitoring group established a toolbox of responses for extra-constitutional changes in member states. These tools include sanctions, membership suspension, and the deployment of peacekeeping forces. But economic sanctions, especially those imposed by countries with their own economic challenges, may not have enough leverage to influence a leader vying to seize power for non-economic reasons. The recent coups in the region have garnered more attention due to the economic progress made by a number of countries in the region. Nigeria and other larger economic ECOWAS countries like Ghana, Côte d'Ivoire and Senegal recognize that instability in the neighborhood can be a contagion that threatens to disrupt their efforts to increase economic investment, trade and opportunity. Additionally, they fear that outside influences are making instability more dangerous. Mali and Burkina Faso turned to the Wagner Group for security assistance after the coups in those countries. In any case, we would appreciate your thoughts on this matter. We kindly ask that you subscribe, like and share our content and provide your valuable insights in the comments section below.